Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. Today is 14th of April, and we're going to look at core mining in this video. To be honest, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing uh, the name of this mining company correctly, but uh, the ticker is CDE. A while ago, I think that was uh, around a week ago or so, one of the viewers on YouTube asked me to have a look at it, and I had in mind to have a look at uh, CDE before that as well. In um, full disclosure, I own just a tiny bit of CDO. It uh, currently takes under 1% of uh, my portfolio. Given uh, the analysis that we're going to look at in a minute, I might probably want to have a little bit more than 1%, but uh, at the moment I'm uh, more focused on uh, gold itself rather than the miners. Uh, but um, actually, there is a chance that uh, miners are going to outperform once uh, all of this uh, debacle with uh, mines closed down uh, finishes. So, as usual, we're going to look at uh, a number of variables that I think are important for a uh, valuation of a gold miner. Of course, gold price, the amount of reserves that uh, the miner has, production costs, getting those reserves out of the ground, how much debt do they have, that reduces the value of the company. Number of shares outstanding to find out the value per share. And um, we're going to take into account the time value of money because it's going to take time to dig those reserves out of the ground and get the value to the investors. And uh, we'll also look at the insider shares because I think that uh, helps to uh, levitate the prices as insiders are usually holding the shares tightly. So uh, since our last uh, look at another miner, that was Barrick Gold, uh, gold price itself has already performed uh, pretty well. At the moment of uh, collecting the data, the gold price was actually 1720, that is the spot price. And uh, we're going to look at uh, three scenarios, conservative, balanced, and optimistic. And uh, the balanced scenario actually takes the gold price uh, $100 below the spot. So... Uh, the balance scenario will uh, take into account a price of 1620. Over the longer term, whether this is going to be sort of an average price over the next few years or not, uh, that is a different question. And uh, the conservative uh, estimation will uh, depend on the price of gold 10% below the balanced. That's going to be uh, just around 1460. And the optimistic valuation will uh, take into account the gold price of 10% above the balanced price. So looking at the company's reserves, and I apologize for this very simple uh, PowerPoint presentation. If I have time, next time I'll try to make these sort of videos look a little bit nicer, but um, I'm just trying to share my opinion with you guys on uh, what I think are interesting things to look at in terms of investments. And um, well, when there is time, I will try to work on the more pretty presentations as well. But uh, looking at the company's reserves, uh, we're only looking at some categories of reserves. Actually, the company would have even more than that. Uh, the fact that we're only looking at some types of reserves without even uh, looking at others means that uh, we are relatively conservative in our estimation, reducing the risk of buying overpriced share. So the proven and probable reserves of gold is uh, nearly 2.6 million ounces. The measured and indicated gold reserves are 2.6 million ounces as well. The company also has silver proven and probable reserves of uh, nearly 183 million ounces. Uh, the company also has other metals, uh, but again, as I mentioned, we don't look at them and we don't even uh, take into account measured and indicated silver reserves. So uh, even in our balanced scenario, we're sort of trying to uh, keep it conservative, try to preserve our capital, try not to buy an uh, overpriced asset. So next, production costs. Last year, the company's production costs were pretty good in their last annual report for 2019. The Costs of producing gold were somewhere around $700, uh, even under that a little bit. But in their 2020 guidance, uh, the possible range for the cost of production are somewhere close to $1,000, just under that. So let's take $980 per ounce as the costs. 
And we're not going to take into account the cost of producing silver because uh, I'm just going to use a gold-silver ratio of, let's say, 100. It means that instead of looking at gold and silver separately, uh, we're kind of looking at, uh, call it gold equivalent or something like that, when we kind of uh, transfer uh, silver into some sort of a gold equivalent with this ratio of uh, 1 for 100. The company has long-term debt of nearly $226 million. Uh, they have 244 million shares outstanding, or slightly less than that. And 1.71% uh, of those shares is held by insiders. Dividing the, the reserves that the company has by their annual production, that kind of gives us their reserves in years. And um, we want to take into account the time value of money. And um, I'm only taking a discount rate of only 2%, because this is not fiat money we're talking about. If it was fiat, you'd probably want to have a higher rate here, especially now with so much money being printed. But in this case, we're talking about the actual gold in the ground. So um, the fact that you have to wait uh, to get that value out of the ground shouldn't really be discounted that much. So taking all of this information into account, our conservative valuation is $7.16. $7.16. I think that's uh, quite attractive compared to the market price of $4.21. At least that's uh, the closing price uh, yesterday. The US markets today haven't opened yet, but they're going to open in about an hour or slightly more than that. Next, looking at balance scenario, balanced estimation. We use all the same information except for a slightly higher gold price of $16.20. And according to my model, that gives us a valuation of $9.88, which is, again, pretty attractive compared to the current market price. And next, in the optimistic valuation, again, we're going to use uh, mostly the same values, except for the gold price. We're going to use $17.05. Oops, that's, I haven't changed that. Uh, that should actually be $17.80. So let's change that. The calculations don't actually change because I have them in my uh, spreadsheet. What changes is just the number presented here in the PowerPoint. So the optimistic uh, gold price is 1785. And of gold only, we actually include only half of the measured and indicated reserves into this valuation, which means, again, we're going quite conservative here, even in our optimistic valuation scenario. So half of gold's measured and indicated reserves is uh, 1.3 million ounces. The rest of the information is the same, and that actually gives us a model share price of slightly over $16, which again is uh, pretty attractive uh, given the current market price. But of course, this is an optimistic valuation. Whether we are going to reach those numbers or not, it's uh, questionable. There is no guarantee, by the way. I'm just uh, sharing my opinion on how I view things with you guys. Now, let's have a look at this chart. The blue line here is the share price of CDE, and the purple line here is a uh, gold price itself. Now, going back to summer last year, since then, CDE has gained mere 43%, even less than that, while gold price has gained uh, 34%, nearly 35%. So, not that much uh, difference in performance in, of these two assets since June last year. But the tops of um, these spikes in CDE. Since uh, summer last year, there have been uh, times when CDE has actually been outperforming gold by a mile, by a mile, say around 180% gains since May last year. And what we also observe, as we did in one of the other videos comparing gold and silver, it looks like at the beginning of uh, the price increases in gold, CDE is actually underperforming gold. And uh, again, that is possibly because investors are first wary to invest into a more volatile asset such as a miner rather than gold itself. And uh, after a while, once the markets get some confirmation that gold is uh, actually, yes, going up for a while, that's when the capital probably starts flowing into more risky assets such as uh, these smaller miners. So looking into the future over the next few months, I do expect gold price to perform relatively well over the next two to three months. And given this relative outperformance of CDE compared to gold price, 
I think there is a chance for CDE to make some uh, nice gains into early summer. That's over the short term to medium term. And I think over the longer term, the value is actually in the reserves that the company has and the costs of getting those reserves out of the ground. So over the longer term, I think we should see some convergence between the market price and the value of the gold in the ground, minus all the costs. Next, looking at this daily chart of CDE. Again, we see a lot of volatility. And currently, the CDE price is below its 200-day moving average. So as I mentioned, over the next uh, intermediate term, I would expect CDE to at least come a little bit closer to that 200-day moving average and possibly even break to the upside. But again, over the last couple of weeks, gold has performed very well. And I think it uh, might be time relatively soon uh, for gold to take a little bit of a rest before it continues higher. So that's my view on uh, CDE, cover mining, a miner that occupies a small or less than 1% share of my personal portfolio. For now, I wish you a nice day and good luck in your trades.